We are fresh off the MSC Seascape, and today we're going to talk about what we loved and what we didn't. Hey everyone, I'm Mark. And I'm Stephanie. And we are The Cruise World. And if you're new here, this is your home for ship tours, vlogs, news, parodies, and a whole lot more. So make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell on. But right now it's time to hop into the seascape. So we used an Uber to get to the port from a local Miami airport hotel. And I think that Uber is a great way to do it, especially if there's just a few of you. It's cheap, it's quick, it's easy. And they dropped us right off where the porters are and we were able to zoom right inside the terminal. Yeah, embarkation was very smooth, especially if you have a passport because they use a lot of facial recognition and it just, it makes the process so much faster. Yeah, to be honest, it's always smooth for me because she handles everything and I just try to stand there and look pretty. When you check in at the port, they have your ship cards right there. You don't have to wait until you get on board, go to your room and find them. They hand them to you right there at check-in. Yeah, that's nice. I don't I don't like getting on a ship and having to use your paper boarding pass that you printed out if you want to get drinks or anything right away. So that is something that I really like about MSC and they gave you the cards right there. So we get on board and the first thing that we like to do on board a ship is the muster drill. Yeah, we like to get it out of the way and then not have to worry about it. But this time it was a fiasco. It, it really wasn't that bad when, when it all comes down to it, but nobody knew what was going on. And I mean, nobody, I mean, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. The next day, the second day on the cruise, there were still people getting together to do the muster drill. But here's the deal. What they wanted you to do was watch a video. So we watched the video in the room and we thought we were good, right? We went to our spot to check in at our muster drill location and they said, oh, you don't check in until later on when they announce it. And this was at like what, like 4.30 or something? So, okay, we just went about our business. We explored the ship. Uh, when they finally, you know, did their, did their drill, the, the emergency call, and they said, everybody to your muster stations, we went down there. We went to check in our cards and they said, oh, you gotta watch the video in your room and then call from your room. So we're like, what? They scanned us in and we were like, this, this elevators were shut down for the muster drill. It's up, down, up, down. So the long and short of it, if you just get on this ship and you wait until they announce the muster drill, watch the video, make the call, go to your muster drill, they'll scan your cards and you're done. But communication, was not, not good. A nice feature that the Seascape offered was a hand luggage drop-off point in the atrium. That way you don't have to carry any hand luggage that you brought on board with you and you are free to explore the ship. And that's a perfect segue because next up, we're gonna talk about the ship. MSC Seascape is a Seaside Evo class ship and she is almost identical to the MSC Seashore. Seascape was built by Fincantieri in Italy and her naming ceremony was held at the Manhattan Cruise Terminal on December 7th of 2022. This is a nice size ship at 339 meters long, just under 170,000 gross tons and she has 20 decks and can carry 5,179 passengers and 1,648 crew members. The MSC Seascape is beautiful. I love the bridge of size at the rear that gives amazing aft views of the ocean and the pools below. You've got the infinity bridges on the sides of the ships and the atrium with the beautiful Swarovski crystal inlaid staircases. And I don't want to be negative right off the bat. My problem with the Seascape is that she doesn't have her own identity. We sailed on the seashore last year and they're the same class of ship. And honestly, if you plop me down on it, I may have thought that I was on the same ship. Aside from the Robotron that's looming over the main pool deck, Seashore has a strong New York City theme with the Times Square area, the Statue of Liberty, and all the venue names that go along with it. And I just think the Seascape needs her own identity. There's too much similar. I, I think they missed the boat. They should have renamed Times Square, had some other theme in that area, and just decorated it differently to give this ship its own theme. What did, what did you like about the Seascape? One of the things that I really enjoy are the infinity pools. They have, you know, a couple different levels in there. So on the top level, you can have your lounger in the water and just kind of chill. Then it gets a little deeper if you want to be in there, but it just offers amazing views into the ocean. 
Another thing about th this ship is it's got those smart elevators where, you know, they work great if people know how to use them. And, and eventually, I'm, I'm convinced that eventually in maybe another 5, 10, 20 years, everybody's going to know how to use them. But there was something about the elevators that really, really got me upset. And that's when we were getting back on the ship from a port. They had a bunch of the elevators shut down. So here we are, like on deck three, needing to get up to deck 12, and the elevators are shut down. And I just, I, I, you allocate a few elevators for that, but it's just like every elevator was shut down. And we had stayed on the ship sometimes and weren't able to, to get up and down where we wanted to go without using the stairs just because we were in port and people were getting back on the ship. Speaking of embarking and disembarking <laughs> at ports, this was the worst experience that I have ever had. Getting off the ship, oftentimes they only had one security person checking, you know, checking people off the ship. At our first port of call, we stood outside for an hour and 15 minutes in 100 degree heat. And the, the kicker of that was, it was, we, we came back right when, when all on board time was. So, it's not like we came back early and just had the rush. We were in the port late because everybody was waiting there to get back on the ship. And, and she's not joking about the time. Um, it, it was crazy. I've never seen anything like this. Um, and when we got up there, what, there was one person scanning cards, right? Yeah, they, they weren't letting people on and then they would let like five people on and then you would stand there. There were like kids and older, you know, senior citizens that were like almost having heat stroke yeah. because we're standing in this heat. So I don't know what was taking so long to get people on the ship, but that was, oh, that But was it, it was a problem at all of our stops. They, they improved a little bit, but I guess, I guess the, the key here is uh, pay for the yacht club and then you've got your own little entrance you can go oh, in. Yeah. It, my feeling is, is, you know, I understand yacht club, it's a premium, it's, it's a priority, but when when you're past the time to leave and you've got a line all the way down the pier open up that other one for people to get into so we can get back on the ship like like she said it was it was over 100 degrees so that was pretty crazy another thing that disappointed me about this ship and i didn't i guess i didn't realize it so much on the seashore but we're trying to we're trying to stay in shape now we're trying to to manage what we eat and how we exercise even when we're on uh, vacation and the gym it's very nice on here, but it's very, very crowded. Oh yeah. The wait time for machines was crazy. I think sometimes it was, you know, a half an hour waiting yeah. for a machine to open up. So they, they do have little signs on there that say limiting your time to 25 minutes on the cardio machine. But for me, you know, if, if I want to walk or I want to jog, I like a ship with a track because I can be out there in the ocean air and you know, seeing seeing the ocean, maybe maybe a, a sunset or a sunrise, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be out in the air and doing that. But this ship doesn't have a track. <laughs> this I, I think almost every MSC ship has a, a track, except for the seashore and the seascape. And there there is another downside to them not having a track. And uh, I think I think I'm going to let you talk about this one. Yeah. We were dining one night at Ola Tacos and I just happened to look out to, you know, check out the scenery and I see this gentleman with his shirt off and his wife walking and I was like, oh, okay, you know, I guess I get it. There's no walking track. The next night we're dining at Butcher's Cut. Now Mark and I are eating inside, but there is dining outside and there's a family very yeah. nicely dressed over here. There's another family over here. And what do you know, here comes that same gentleman, shirtless, with his wife, and they're walking. And every few minutes, they're <laughs> walking back and forth because there's no walking track. Yep. So if I spent a bunch of money to dine outside and some sweaty dude keeps walking <laughs> past me, I might... You would probably lose your appetite. And I mean, and I guess it's hard to blame him, right? He's, he's trying to get his exercise, mm -hmm. and that's really, unfortunately, the best place to have to to walk around out there because there's no track so that's something um that uh that we definitely didn't like about this ship and um the ships that msc has are beautiful there's there's no oh, doubt sure. about that one of the things that 
Uh, people are constantly talking about MSC. It's one of the most controversial cruise lines, uh, you know, that, that people have out there today. And it's because of the customer service. I just had a, a guy uh, on our seashore ship tour uh, video. He made a comment saying that he loves the ships, but he's never sailing with them again because he hates the customer service, both uh, port side and, uh, and on the ships. And we've had our issues in the past with, uh, with the customer service uh, through COVID when we had onboard credit and, and things. Um, but we didn't really have to deal with them this time. And I thought that the customer service and all of the staff on board the Seascape were great. What about you? Well, we did have to deal with customer service when we were having the issue with the noise. <laughs> So I am one of those people where certain noises bother me, little noises bother me. And when we first got to our room, there was this like whistling sound and I, it was really loud in the hall and then I could even hear it in our room. So I asked the roomster and he's like, oh yeah, it's just because we're docked and you know, there's doors open and this and that. And I'm like, okay, we'll see. So later that night, we're sailing, still hearing that noise. And I'm like, hmm, yeah, I don't get it. Even in our room with the TV on, could still hear it. Eight o'clock the next morning, completely, you know, silent. All I can hear is this whistling sound outside the door. So I went to guest services and I'm like, listen, I showed her two videos that I took. I'm like, this is the sound it's making inside you know, the room. Yeah, but they, they took care of us. Uh, it, it took a little bit, but they did find us another room. So back to my point, uh, you know, I thought the service, uh, the customer service and all of the staff on this ship uh, were, were good. Um, very pleasant. Uh, I know we uh, talked in our MSC Seashore review about the, the car salesmen trying to hawk around selling everything. And, and they, were, they were doing that again. They're trying to upsell. Mm -hmm but it wasn't, it wasn't nearly as bad. So now we're gonna talk about the room and you kind of already got us started on, on the deal with the whistle, but as far as the actual room goes, what did you think? I really like that they have a button you can push for do not disturb or make up your room. That way your room steward knows what's going on with you. The bathroom is your typical stateroom bathroom. It's spacious for what it is but I wish that they had better lighting in the shower because it was kind of dark in there. I also was not a fan of the closet situation. It wasn't set up very well because there was a shoe rack at the bottom, which was convenient, but it made hanging dresses a pain. They got bunched up at the bottom and kind of wrinkled. And there was only uh, hanging on the one side of it too. So, you know, if, if, you've, if you're one that takes like a lot of dresses, and suits or, or shirts and things that need to be hung, uh, you might run out of room kind of quick. In most newer staterooms, you have to keep a card near the light switch to keep everything powered on in the room. And this one's no different other than the fact that it actually has to be your stateroom key card. If you take that out, the lights are gonna go off. So when you leave, unless you leave your key card in there, you're not gonna be able to charge things like your cameras, your, your batteries, your phones, things like that, which is kind of a bummer for me, but we know it now, so we we plan for it, and uh, and it is what it is, right? I may or may not have left <laughs> my key in the room once or twice uh, because it was in that little slot. It's easy to forget, especially when you're drinking. Look, there's another segue. It's time to talk about food and drink. All right, so as far as dining experiences go here on the MSCC Scape, we were a little disappointed right when we walked on board the ship, uh, actually before, because we looked at our cards and the first thing we noticed was that it said our dining time was 9.30 p.m. and it's not what you requested, is it? Heck no, we like <laughs> early dining. And we requested it uh, like way early on when we booked, so I think we were supposed to be around, what, 5.15, 5.30 mm -hmm. or something. So obviously 9.30 wasn't gonna work for us. We're usually, I don't wanna say in bed, but we're usually watching our show so we can maybe go to bed right after that. Um, so we had to go and stand in a line um, to talk to the Mater D. Not what we really wanna do when you first get on a ship is stand in a line, but they were able to hook us up and they got our time, what was our time? 
5.30. 5.30, so right right in the general time frame that we wanted. So that was good. Mm -hmm. After we got our dining time fixed, we went up to the buffet for lunch, which is pretty much your only option for lunch. And it was crazy busy up there. One thing about dining up at the buffet, you have to be willing to sit with strangers. Yeah, especially on embarkation day. And though it wasn't that busy the rest of the week, one of the things uh, about the, the seascape is that that's pretty much the only dining venue for lunch. It's it's not like a lot of these other ships, you know, Carnival, you know, they've got the guys burgers and, and all the, the blue iguana and the Royal Caribbean ships, you know, Park Cafe or, or the dog house and all this. This is it. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can go to the dining room, one of the main dining rooms for lunch most days as well. Um, but this is it here on the, the seascape or, or, or a premium option. Uh, you could get sushi or Ola tacos or something. Um, that being said, I, I think the buffet was good. There, were a, there was a lot of variety mm -hmm. um, on the buffet, uh, but there was one caveat with all of the food on the buffet, right? My recommendation when you're eating at the buffet is to do a full lap to see what you want because they have a lot of different options, but they're spread out and they all, you know, they only offer like burgers over here or they only offer pizza over here. So yeah, do yeah. a lap and get your bearings. Yeah, good food though. And I, and there was plenty of variety uh, for the seven days for, for me to eat different things uh, every day, even though I think I pretty much ate pizza most days, pizza and salad, but. Donuts for yeah. breakfast. Another, another cool <laughs> thing in the, in the uh, buffet area there is the, the call service buttons for, for drinks, okay? So they've got a bar in the Marketplace Buffet and they've got these little things at every table where you can just push the button and that alerts uh, the wait staff that you, uh, you need service. They come right over and it works real well when they're operating. So my only downside about that is sometimes they just, they weren't working. Um, I don't know if it was uh, an issue with, with staffing at those particular times, but I'll tell you what, when they're working, like they're great, it's great. You can go get your food and you don't have to worry about getting back up to go get a drink, hit the button and they'll be right there to help you out. So that's the buffet. Uh, obviously the main dining room, we ate there a couple of times. There were, there were more American options than we had previously uh, encountered on MSC, so that was good. So in addition to the buffet, there are 11 different dining options on board the MSC Seascape, including three main restaurants, a dedicated Aria and Yacht Club restaurant, and five specialty restaurants. There's the Ocean Key Seafood Restaurant, Kyoto Sushi Bar and Teppanyaki, Butcher's Cut Steakhouse, and my favorite, Ola Tacos. Tell us about Ola Tacos. Oh, Ola Tacos is a steal of a deal. So they have the a la carte option where you can just buy what you want or- Don't do it. You can buy all you can eat. It's $18. I'm a picky person about my guacamole. I'm not a huge fan of tomatoes and everything, but they will allow you to muddle your own guacamole. So they bring out like this plate of all the ingredients with you know the pestle and the mortar and you can just add what you want. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, so this, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the value of a lot of the premium dining on board cruise ships just in general, because you're paying quite a bit of money when I could go eat somewhere else for free and spend that same amount of money outside on a restaurant and get a, get a nice meal there. I do eat at the premium dining restaurant sometimes just because I like the experience, but this is one that I think is very well worth it. $18 on top of what uh, what you're already paying for the cruise and all you can eat, you can definitely eat your fill at Ola Tacos. We did have a drink package on the Seascape and it allowed us to have all you can drink sodas, bottled waters, energy drinks, and alcoholic beverages up to $10. And there was a pretty good variety of drinks in that range too. I know that, uh, I, I mean, we're not big drinkers, but we, we found plenty of drinks uh, in that price range that, uh, that we liked. Oh yeah, they probably had one of the better selections of cruise line beverages that I prefer. And what is this, is this a Pepsi ship? No, baby, it's a Coca-Cola ship. Yeah, so you got your, your Cokes, your Sprites, all that, and uh, Red Bulls, right? Red Bulls on, yes, on board uh, the Bull. ship. So we spent most of our time in the, in the atrium bar. I don't, 
I don't, I'm not exactly sure why, but that's just where we were gravitating to the middle of the ship. And, and other than the fact that, that there was some staffing issues in there uh, at certain times, I think you, you noted that in the afternoon, one time on a sea day, there was only one bartender in there, right? Yeah, and unfortunately he was a young, I'm gonna say he was a young kid who maybe was on his first contract <laughs> and he was trying to wait on four servers Plus, you know, the 10 people sitting at the bar and he was he was on the struggle bus. Yeah. So, you know, there also I noticed that there wasn't a whole lot of consistency with with the the drinks um, from one bartender to the next. So I, I like to get a consistent drink, but we did because we found we found our bartender and his name was Linton and uh, and he made the best drinks uh, and we kept going back and back. What was your favorite drink? The frozen Toblerone. And my favorite was the BBC. And what was what was in it? Bananas and chocolate. Yum. <laughs> One thing that I hated about the atrium <laughs> is there was nowhere for your knees to go. When you were sitting on the bar stool, unless you wanted to sit spread eagle. I got no problem with that. Yeah, you've got no problem with that. <laughs> But there was nowhere for your knees to go. It was just a very tiny space from the lip of the bar. And it, what, did, did it have something to do with the way the chairs were too, the stools, or was it just? No, it was just, I don't know. Yeah. It was just uh, very uncomfortable. I didn't, I didn't enjoy sitting there for long periods of time. And also when, when we sat down in there another time and also back in Le Cabaret Rouge, they brought some snacks over a couple times. So that was kind of cool. Some chips and uh, was peanuts or? Mixed yeah. nuts. So that was a nice little touch as well. Food and drinks on the board, uh, on board overall, I, I enjoyed. I did too. Yeah. Next up, we're gonna talk about the entertainment and activities. So the main entertainment venue is the Cora Theater, and they've got six brand new shows featuring the MSC singers and dancers. It is very similar to Carnival's Playlist Productions. And one thing we also love about the seashore and seascape is La Cabaret Rouge, which is the second entertainment venue on board. Yeah, it's at the rear of the ship as opposed to the Cora Theater all the way uh, on the forward. And when we were on the seashore, we loved Le Cabaret Rouge. I think it was our favorite. They also had uh, different shows nightly with the dedicated uh, singers and dancers that were back there. Unfortunately, here on Seascape, um, all week long, they had two performers. It was a magician and a violinist. And listen, I mean, they were good. We went in and, and listened to, to them, uh, to the violinist and, and watched the magician briefly the first night. But we were kind of disappointed to find out that that was the entertainment in there all week because I guess maybe we got spoiled last year on the seashore with new shows nightly. So I don't think that these are the same two performers on every week. Um, I am curious to see what the Seascape is doing uh, on a week to week basis in Le Cabaret Rouge. So if you've sailed on the Seascape or you're getting ready to, I would appreciate it if you drop a line down in the comments and let me know what kind of entertainment they had in Le Cabaret Rouge for you. But up in the Cora Theater, you enjoyed the shows? I love their shows. Yeah. MSC really, they put on some really good productions. And something kind of cool when uh, the first night when we were up in the show uh, theater, uh, as soon as she came on, on stage, you noticed somebody. Yes, we saw Claire, who we had sailed with previously on the Carnival Vista. Was it the Vista or Horizon? Right. One, one of the two, yes. either way, she used to be a carnival playlist performer and it's like immediately as far as like, hey, so we connected with her. I think she had her birthday while we were on board there too. So it was it was amazing. And uh, we got some more great photos of, of the cast there. You can check those out over on our Instagram page. But yeah, entertainment uh, was, was good, very good. I enjoyed it. Just a little disappointed about um, the lack of, of variety in Le Cabaret Rouge but there's also some things to do on board. So you've got the arcade and they've got virtual reality uh, racers. They've got an XD uh, cinema there. And then they've got the multi-tiered uh, water park. Mm -hmm. It's- uh, And of course the casino. Yeah, a lot of people like the casino and the, like I, meant, I alluded to this earlier, the biggest difference between the seascape and the seashore is what's looming over the pool deck 
and that's the Robotron. Um, I wrote it. I've actually got a, a video of me writing it up here. Why didn't you ride the Robotron, Steph? First of all, Stephanie does <laughs> not like motion like that. And after watching you ride it, it was just a lot of starting, stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping. And I'm not, I'm not about that. Yeah, I'm glad I rode it. Uh, it cost $10 and I think it was worth it. It, it does last three minutes long, um, but it, it was kind of jerky. And, and honestly, I wish, it, I wish it went faster. I really do. Uh, but it's fun. I like that the cruise ships are doing new and different things. So they all keep pushing each other to up the bar. So activities and entertainment on board, I think is, is good. I wish there was a little more trivia and stuff during the day, things to do during the day, but we're nerds like that. But they did, they did have good prizes, right? Heck yeah, I was kind of bummed. We were one point <laughs> away from winning a nice MSC backpack, but we did win a visor. You know, they offer, um, you know, they offer some smaller prizes, but like a backpack, hello, I'll take that. So it wasn't a Royal Caribbean keychain or highlighter? No. <laughs> so they were good prizes, so that's good. But so it was no ship on a stick either. <laughs> so in summary, I think the value of this MSC cruise was really good. I think MSC offers one of the best values as far as cruise fares go. And if you can catch them when they're offering their drink package, Wi-Fi, and onboard credit, it's a steal of a deal. Yeah, and I'm gonna piggyback onto that because the the drinks, I think I think every cruise of theirs in in the Bahamas goes to Ocean Key, right? And the drink packages and the Wi-Fi, they both carry over to Ocean Key, which is their private island, and it's a marine reserve. The water is beautiful. The beaches are great. They've got a lighthouse you can climb. And if your sailing stays there into the evening, uh, they even do a light show at the lighthouse. So it's a very, very chill place to go. Unfortunately for me, it's all chill and no thrill. Yeah, it's, it would be nice if they would. I, I'm not saying they need to add like a, a perfect day at Coco Cay, huge water park, but I, I mean, I like hanging out at Mr. Sancho's or, or at the port pools like at Amber Cove or Costa Maya. I think they would be well served putting something like that uh, in, in the, maybe in the middle of the island where they can play music and people can dance. I mean, I, I see all of those areas at those ports are always jam packed with people. Some people just don't like, they like sailing in the ocean, but they may not like swimming in the ocean. And though there are some very serene spots uh, there at Ocean Key, I mean, that's just my suggestion. I th and there's a lot of empty space. They could do it there. I think that they would be well served putting an area like that with a pool and some music and they could have the food and the bars right there. There are plenty of food and, and drinks on the island. Ocean Key is, is amazing and I, I hope you can get there soon. But I just wanted to roll that in there too, that, that your, your drink package uh, and the Wi-Fi can continue out onto the island so that you can continue that fun in if you do get one of those packages like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. They also have some food trucks out there which are complimentary and they have, uh, I believe there's two different buffets where they offer food throughout the day. So you don't have to get back on the ship. You can just spend all day out there if you'd like. Yeah, and we talked about the value of MSC and what I think is kind of cool is they, they offer everything from like a, a, a discounted type of rate cruising where you're basically just paying for the cruise fare and, and that's it. And they're beautiful ships, so you're getting a lot just with that, eating in the main dining rooms or the buffet, all the way up to first class, all the way, ship within a ship, yacht club with butler service, their own private spots on the ship for pools and dining, as well as out on Ocean Key. They've got their own, their own special uh, private beach out there as well. So yeah, MSC, listen, you're gonna hear a lot of bad things. If you got any questions for us about our experiences on MSC further, you can drop a comment down below or uh, post something in our Facebook group if you're not a member already. It's the Cruise World on Facebook. So we've had some bad experiences with MSC, but we've had a lot of good too. We've never had a, a bad cruise with MSC. So we're gonna continue sailing with them. Absolutely, I'm looking forward to our seaside one. Coming yep, up. that's coming up next week. So stay tuned. We'll have lots of videos from that ship as well, as well as a, a ship tour. Um, is there anything else you want to add, Steph? Oh, yes. When you get on board, you need to take the credit card that is linked to your account 
and you have to activate it. They have machines um, on certain decks and you have to take it and activate it so that your account is in good standing. So MSC is making a huge push at North American Cruisers. They've got the Seascape over here now, the Seaside, the Seashore was over here. And like I mentioned earlier, the MSC World America is being built right now. It's going to be an LNG powered 200,000 gross ton ship. And we're excited that we'll be sailing on the maiden voyage and maybe you guys can come out and join us. But that's it for today. Make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. Thanks for joining and as always remember, life is short and cruising is fun. We'll see you next time.